Hello. Welcome back. And as always, I hope you're doing well. Right. Right, before I start, guys, I want to let you know that Stripey Rambles, me, still don't have any internet. What? Open reach are as useless as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking competition. <laughs> we have had back and forth all week. And even though I put out a video a couple of days ago, the clones of Bruce box set that Aman Deep sent me, I had to literally put that on my phone after I'd done the edit on my computer and it took just under four hours to upload using 4G. So this could possibly be the last video I put out until after the internet's fixed. It should be next week because everything's in place. It's just, I don't know what the problem is, but we've gone a week without internet. And on the back of that, I finally finished Tom Bleeker's Unsettled Matters, The Life and Death of Bruce Lee. So I thought I'd give you my brief review on the book. Do I like it? Yeah, I did. I enjoyed the book. This on the back here says, In August 1973, while his body is being flown from Hong Kong to Seattle, Washington, Bruce Lee's coffin mysteriously opened and the dye from his dark blue suit bled into the coffin's white silk interior. The ancient Chinese saw it as a bad omen. The buried man will not live in peace. They proclaimed there are unsettled matters. Does draw you in. It's a great little read, although I must admit I got a little bit confused halfway through with the back and forth between certain lawyers. It got really, really messy after Bruce Lee died because obviously Bruce didn't make a will. I mean, he was 32. Now, Tom Bleeker knew Bruce Lee. He trained with him throughout the 60s. I think he was friends with Ed Parker. And he knew Bruce. He trained with him and et cetera, et cetera. And Tom Bleeker knew all, you know, all the stars. Steve McQueen, Blake Edwards. He knew a lot of the stars. And he knew Bruce and the family. And obviously, he co-wrote the book with Linda, The Bruce Lee Story, which ended up being Dragon, The Bruce Lee Story. And... During that time, he got romantically involved and ended up marrying Linda Lee. So he was at the house with Brandon and Shannon and obviously Linda. So he had access to all Bruce Lee's stuff, basically. Now, there's a lot of people on the internet that either hate this book or love this book. I've seen some reviews on YouTube, so I thought I'd give my brief opinion on it. On the whole, I did enjoy the read. It's like two halves, basically. It's Bruce Lee's rise up until July 20th, 1973, and then obviously the weird circumstances around his death, and then afterwards the autopsy. The, the court stuff, honestly, I got lost in it, really. The Lloyd to London, and the, is it the ANA? I did get kind of a little bit confused, so, but I held on and I kept a grip of it. Now, for a book that was written in 1996, you've got to give it credit that he named Bobby Baker, Rob Baker, you know, who played Petrov in Fist of Fury, and as we know in 2019, the Bob Baker letters was revealed. So he did name Bob as Bruce Lee's supplier. Let's just word it that way. There's some really weird goings on. I mean, Bruce Lee's butler that I've never seen interviewed never seen him sit down and tell his opinion of what went on Wu Nang we, we know Wu Nang he's the one that holds a shield in Way of the Dragon and Tung Lung kicks him and he goes into the cardboard boxes that was Bruce Lee's kind of manservant really friend he, he grew up with the Lees when he was younger and he lived at Cumberland Road his family lived in there with the Lees and he was around at that time and he got left the house weird you know a load of money um, on Bruce Lee's death Wu Nang become a very wealthy man and I find it really weird that he's I mean I think he's passed away now has any of you ever heard him in interviews talking about Bruce Lee I certainly haven't and if anyone would know the inside stuff to Bruce it would be Wu Nang and also Raymond Chow he was ruthless but 
There's some weird goings on the day of Bruce Lee's death, and I think now in the light of the Bob Baker letters, it kind of makes things a little bit more clearer. For years, I always thought the, the official story that he was hypersensitive to the aquagesic that was in the tablet um, made his brain swell. Let's be honest, he hurt his back quite badly doing the uh, good morning exercise, done his back in. Nothing like <laughs> dragging the Bruce Lee story. So he was taking painkillers. Of course he was taking painkillers. I find it now, as a, a looking into Bruce Lee like I do, the whole taking a painkiller and he was hypersensitive to the aquagesic, a little bit far-fetched, to be honest. But I think we kind of know a little bit more now. And if you've been watching the KFG's recent videos about the last few months of Bruce Lee's life... I kind of think that's how it went down. This book delves deeply into the complexities of Bruce Lee's financial affairs and the tumultuous events leading up and around the days until July 20th, Bruce Lee's death. And while I may not agree with all of Tom Bleaker's assertions in here, there are a couple of things. I mean, I'm not sure, honestly, about the steroid use. I, I really haven't heard this anywhere else, but I know steroids back in the day were quite popular and they wasn't so taboo like they are now, but I'm not sure about that. And there was a couple of other bits as well, and I just want to sort of like point it out. On page 162, it says, and we're talking about Game of Death here, to many, the sight of Bruce wearing a washed out yellow jumpsuit that hung on him like a wet dish rag was heartbreaking. And it was hardly coincidental that Game of Death was the only film starring Bruce Lee in which he did not appear bare-chested. I honestly don't think that Game of Death tracksuit hung on him like a wet rag. And I have seen photos of Bruce Lee on the set of Game of Death with the tracksuit all around his waist. And his physique looks very much like it was in Enter the Dragon. Also, there are loads of photos of Bruce Lee in black jeans or black trousers in the New Territories, and his physique looked exactly like it did in Enter the Dragon. And, let's be honest, in Enter the Dragon, he was bare-chested a lot in the film, right from the beginning, and yes, he was very, very slim. His fight with Samo, where he's just wearing them like Speedos, or whatever they're called, he's very lean. But the, the underground cavern fight, the big battle at the end, the fight with Han, it was completely bare-chested. The guy looked ripped. Was he lighter than he was in Way of the Dragon, Fist of Fury and the Big Boss? He was, he was. But I don't think anyone looks as good as Bruce in that yellow tracksuit. I don't think it hung on him like a wet dish rag. And the other bit, on the next page, 163, it says screenwriter Jan Spears was hired to develop the story that would showcase the 15 minutes of fight footage that Bruce had previously filmed in Hong Kong. Jan Spears was Robert Klaus. It was a pseudonym. As simple as that. So, there are some bits about this book that I really did like. I think it read really easy. It was a bit like a pulp crime novel. Um, it was really well written. A little bit confusing at times, but the book is indispensable for anyone looking to challenge their perceptions of Bruce Lee, and it does uncover significant details that you won't find in any other book about his life and his tragic passing. For me, it makes Bruce Lee more human, waltz and all. Troubled man, yes. Under a lot of pressure, yes. It was an interesting read, and I'm really glad I read it. And at some stage, I'm going to reread this book, I think. I think it needs a couple of reads to really, like I said, the the law stuff, the lawsuits and all that lot. I, it was very hard for me to keep up with. I mean, lawyers was making, taking a percentage of the Bruce Lee royalties. No wonder the Lee Foundation really cling tight to Bruce Lee's image and the name Bruce Lee. I mean, because Bruce died broke or pretty much broke, he didn't have a lot of money left. Raymond Chow seemed to hold a lot of it, according to this book. But yeah, just on my first thoughts, I did enjoy the book, but is it completely accurate? I'm not 100% sure. 
I'm looking forward to the Kung Fu Genius. I think he's going to do a breakdown of this book. I will look forward to that because at the moment the book is fairly fresh in my head. So I will look forward to listening to what Alex has got to say about this. But on the whole, an enjoyable read. A little bit tragic in places. You know, the whole day with Raymond meeting Betty to discuss the script of Game of Death. Raymond wasn't a screenwriter. But having said that, sometimes I'm talking about Bruce Lee and I'll bat ideas off the wife. She doesn't really know much about Bruce Lee, but sometimes you do stuff like that. I don't really know. I think we all know why he went there that day, but that's a video for possibly another day or for someone else to do. But have any of you read Unsettled Matters? Let me know in the comments down below. And what are your thoughts on Tom Bleaker's book? Tom's got a great little YouTube channel and he's got a whole playlist on Bruce Lee and I do enjoy listening to what he's got to say. It's a good book and I do recommend it. It's a really good book, really. But that's just my opinion. Let me know your opinion down below. Right, next week, guys, I will be going over to interview Steve Kerridge. We're going to just pin down a day, but it will be next week. Hopefully, my internet will be back on by then. So I'll be able to uh, edit the video and put it up one day next week. But this will probably be the last one I do until the internet's back on. So sorry about that, but it's completely out of my hands. But I don't want to just keep uploading seven gigs worth of video via 4g it's a long affair right so there you go that's my very brief review of tom bleaker's book unsettled matters the life and death of bruce lee which has no pictures of bruce in it by the way and it even says on the back here discover why both the author and the publication company have been threatened with massive civil lawsuits if we dare publish the contents in this book like i said this was written in 96 1996 we only found out about the bob baker letters in 2019 so there was some revelations and it is very very detailed it is yeah i'm glad to own it i'm glad to own it whether it's 100 percent accurate i'm not so sure but an enjoyable read nevertheless let me know your thoughts on it guys right that's it I want to thank every single person that comments on the videos, as always. Everyone who's given it a thumbs up. And, of course, my amazing patrons. Thank you very much. Have yourselves an amazing week, guys. Much love. And I'll be back with another ramble. Hopefully, <laughs> real soon. You take care of yourselves now. <laughs>